Honey, is everything okay? Do you know what time you'll be home yet? I know you said you were going shopping with Alice today, but, you know, I didn't really think you'd be out this late, that's all. I mean, look at the time, Eric. We're usually getting ready for bed by this hour. Uh, my bad. It looks like I'm going to be held up for a while longer, babe. My hands are a little tied on this one. You should probably go ahead and head to bed yourself. Don't let me keep you waiting. Don't bathe me. What do you mean your hands are tied? It's shopping, right? Not a business trip or something. Can you at least tell me what time you intend to come home? At the very least. Yeah, well, you know how it is. You go out with someone and one thing leads to another and it's always a bit of a social snowball with your sister. Anyways, the two of us are going to be doing some bar hopping. So, like I said, it'll be a while before I make it back. Bar hopping? Wait, wait, hang on a second. Why are you getting drunk with my sister of all people, huh? What is going on here? Jeez, calm down. Like I said, it just came up spontaneously. It's really not that big of a deal. Do you really have that much of a problem with us spending time together? No, not really. It's just... Besides, if she's going to be my sister-in-law and our baby's aunt soon, shouldn't Alice and I get along? We've practically been strangers up until now. I mean, I'm glad you two are getting along and she's coming out of her shell somewhat. Don't get me wrong. I'm just a little worked up because you told me you'd be home early to help around the house, and I was hoping you'd keep your word. With how big this baby inside me is getting, I can't move around the way I used to. You know, on top of that housework, is now harder than it used to be. Yeah, but I'm no good with that stuff. I've got no drive to do it myself, and I'd probably just get in your way anyhow. No drive? Honey, I really hope you find some drive by the time the baby comes, or else we're going to be fighting a serious uphill battle trying to make this work. Don't you think it'd be easier to at least try to get used to doing that before we've got a screechy tiny little human on our hands? Yeah, quit busting my chops over here. This isn't what I signed up for. I thought we agreed that I'd bring in the dough and you'd keep the house afloat, right? I know, and I intend to keep that balance as much as I can, but I want to be realistic. No matter how we think or act, the fact of the matter is you have to accept that having a kid is going to be demanding for mother and father alike. Didn't we also promise we'd do this together as a team? You can't seriously expect me to handle all this on my own. All right, all right. When the baby comes, I'll step up to bat, sure. Hey, I'm sure my mom would love to come and help out too. Doesn't that sound nice? One big happy family. Speaking of which, let me focus on getting to know your sister a little better. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but trust me, I think you're being plenty buddy-buddy with my family at this point. Can't you at least focus on other family members like me for once? The whole point of being friends with them is because of me, isn't it? And while, yes, it's very sweet of your mother to want to come here and help with a baby, she lives pretty far away from here. That's a pretty tall order for an older lady like her, isn't it? Trust me, if I ask her for help with something, she's going to go above and beyond to make it happen. Come on, Louise, you can trust me. I'm a people's person at heart, and making connections is way more my style than doing dishes and stuff. Why do the work myself when I charm people into doing it for me? I deserve to be served, not doing the serving. Well, maybe sometimes it's worth doing the hard work yourself especially if it's for the sake of your family. I mean, are you going to try to talk someone else into being the father or something? You realize how weird what you're saying is, right? You're the weird one. Get off my back. I'm begging you. God, pregnancy isn't doing any favors for your personality. You used to be so chilled and laid back, you know? Now, every time I want to do anything my way, it's like I gotta navigate a field of landmines with you or something. Save the Western Front garbage. I just need all quiet. If you're going to pull my ear, can I at least get a thank you every once in a while? Of course. I'm very proud of you and thankful that you're interested in being on good terms with my family, Eric. Seriously, job well done. Emphasis on done, though. My sister likes you. You're good. Trust me. At the very least, could you charm your way into seeing my parents, too? I've noticed you dodged the chance to spend time with them on more than one occasion. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just feel like my speciality is more with, you know, our generation. I get that, and I'm not asking you to spend all your weekends with them. 
But come on, you ducked out of Thanksgiving and Christmas with them. That doesn't make you seem very committed, you know. They're starting to question whether or not you're still alive. I'm a busy guy, okay? Sure, but you're never too busy to go on shopping trips with Alice, are you? What's this? Am I detecting a hint of jealousy? I told you, it's not like that. I'm just trying to advocate for myself. And I'm trying to advocate for myself. Just because we get along doesn't mean you need to turn all green with envy, you know? I'm married to you, Louise, not to the sensational She-Hulk. All right, fine. If you want to push me like this and make me play the monster, I'll play your game. I just want to know one thing from you, lover boy. Can you honestly look me in the eyes and tell me you've never had an impure thought about my sister? Not even once? Well, I mean, you really want me to be honest? Like, you really, really want the truth from me? Are you absolutely, positively certain? Because if you want that, I guess I'd be lying if I said it never crossed my mind. Ugh, <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? You're such a pig! No, please, you're sisters. And you could practically be twins at that. That's just genetics and the human pattern-seeking brain, not me. If I'm looking at her, of course she's going to remind me of you. Besides, we're on the same wavelength and all that. When we go out together, it's like when you and I first started dating. <laughs> she makes me feel like a young man again. You know, I can't help but buy her presents sometimes when we're out together. Presents? What kind of presents? You know, just like this and that. Ladylike things. Ew, ew, ew! I knew there was something weird and gross about this. You're treating her like, like you're trying to reboot our relationship, but with her this time. Oh, that's so gross and, ugh. Also, ladylike things? Really? I know when you're dodging a question. Answer the question, Eric. What did you buy for Alice? Sheesh, nothing gets past you, does it? Or rather, it's more like you won't let anything go, like a dog latched onto a frisbee. If you really must know, I bought your sister a Louis Vuitton wallet, okay? She didn't ask me to, I just heard her mention it, and I decided I would surprise her with it. There, happy? Louis Vuitton? Good God, you're buying her expensive brand garbage now? What is wrong with you? How much did it cost? Uh, something like a thousand? Dollars? No, Paisan. Yeah, of course I mean dollars. Who cares anyway? I paid for it with the credit card, so it's not like it matters how much it costs, really. Did you not take economics in school or something? Or do you just not know what a credit score is? Eric, come on! It wasn't even her birthday or anything. At this point, I'm afraid to look at our finances when it actually is her birthday. See, this is exactly why I didn't want to tell you, because you always blow things way out of proportion. You can cry all you want up and down the block about our finances, but at the end of the day, it's my money and I can decide how I choose to spend it. Be honest with yourself anyways. Are you mad because I spent the money, or just mad because I didn't spend it on you? How much greedier can you get, honestly? I know you're jealous, but don't hide behind some phony morals. Phony? Greedy? Jealous? In what world is what you're doing acceptable? Alright, you're really starting to get on my nerves at this point. If you want me to play ball with your parents, you'd better stop looking so closely at how I treat your sister and just let me do my thing, got it? Otherwise, the chance that we're going to be kissing under the mistletoe at mom and pops this year, drastically going down. Got it, babe? I'm not the kind of guy you can just boss around. <laughs> Okay, fine. I'm sorry. I went a bit too aggressive there, and I want to de-escalate things. Can we walk it back together? That's more like it. Proceed with the frustration. Sure. All right. I promise there's nothing wrong with going shopping with Alice. But can you not be so frivolous with our money? Trust me, I would similarly be worried if you had bought me that wallet. I just don't want us to be in financial freefall, especially with a kid on the way. Well, when you put it like that, and you successfully cool it with the hysterics, I see your point. That was pretty hasty of me. I mean, that smile on her face made it pretty worth it though, you know? I see. So that's how it is. Well, thank you for giving me insight into the, um, inner machinations of your mind. It's my pleasure. 
Women rarely understand the delicate, advanced mind of a man. And just to get it out of the way, I don't suppose you get me any sort of luxurious present like that, did you? For you? As if. You're not really the kind of girl who appreciates fancy things, so why would I go out of my way to get you something like that? Is that so? <laughs> I'm learning a lot about myself today as well, apparently. Don't take it too personally. I'm just spitting facts over here. Not everyone's born with a sense for high fashion, like Alice or I. That's all there is to it. Not every pig can sniff out truffles, after all. Gotta be honest, the pig analogy is not winning me over, Eric. I understand if you like Alice, but is it possible for you to talk about her without putting me down? Maybe you shouldn't spend any time with my parents. You already sound like my mom. Nobody's putting anybody down. I told you, I'm just laying down the foundational facts of the matter. I doubt your mom's doing it either, honestly. You just drew the unfortunate straw of being much less uh, agreeable than your sister. That's my two cents, at least. Sometimes when I spend time with Alice, and then I go back home to you, I think I must have chosen the wrong sister to marry or something. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? How can you say something like that? Give me a break. I was obviously joking. Like I said earlier, you used to be pretty easy going before you got pregnant, you know? Now you're about as fun as doing my taxes. Live a little, laugh a lot, you know? If you don't lighten up, our kid is going to come out all emo and stuff. If you want me to laugh, stick to actually funny material, not this disturbing garbage about marrying my sister. Whatever, I got a jet. I'll see you when I'm back from our little pub crawl. Don't wait up for me, okay? Get some sleep. You clearly need some rest. Fine. Just do me a favor and try not to come home too late, alright? Good night. Come on, where are you? I'm getting really sick of this ghosting garbage, Eric. Pick up the phone for crying out loud. Alright, alright, what do you want, woman? You know I hate talking over the phone. If you have something to say, just text me. If I have something to say? That's rich. Care to explain these weird cryptic messages Alice sent me since you're too busy to tell me over the phone? What messages? First time hearing about it. Oh, sure. I'm sure you'd never hear a whiff about her messaging me that she wants to marry you. Care to explain, you two-timing wannabe Casanova? Wannabe? I'm as real as it gets, girl. And those messages are real too, and real easy to understand from my perspective. Seems pretty self-explanatory to me, Louise. I'm not sure what's confusing you. I'm a highly sought-after item. What do you want me to say? Right. What a totally normal and innocuous thing to say. How could I possibly be perturbed by such a thing? Except for the fact that you know we're married. Not to mention the fact that I'm pregnant with your baby. Do you really think now of all times is when you should start acting a complete and utter dog? First of all, I'm a wolf, a real alpha type. And second of all, I'm allowed to do what I want, when I want, child or no child. Child or no child? This is a human's life we're talking about. And sooner or later, your gallivanting is going to mess this kid up. And mother and father are supposed to be the most important role models in a child's life. What do you have to say for yourself, Eric? The only thing I want to say right now is that I would feel bad for any guy who got Alice pregnant. If she turned into anything like you, hypothetically speaking. Oh yeah, and you wouldn't happen to know about this mysterious guy, would you? Hey, like I said, it's a hypothetical. And even if, in this hypothetical, I was hypothetically that guy, I would say I would have learned my lesson with you. Just like how Alice and I may have hypothetically had a purely hypothetical discussion about how we'd be much happier if the two of us tied the knot. Again, entirely speculative on my end. But hey, if she's messaging you about it, that might mean she's taking it pretty seriously. And you didn't have the sense to shut her down? What about us, huh? Well, I guess if Alice wants to marry me, I've got no choice but to divorce you, right? If you got any other suggestions, I'm all ears though. Let's hear it, Louise. What can you give me that she can't? What can I give you? Is that all this is to you? Just pros and cons, wins and losses in your corner? Do you really not give a damn about me anymore? Worse than that, do you really not care about what happens to this baby inside of me? Your baby. 
Mm, no, I don't care, especially if you're gonna drag me down like this. Why should I be stuck with you and that baby like some kind of bozo when I could soar above the clouds with a real lady like Alice? Nah, I think I'll pass on the whole doom and gloom thing that you've got going and do myself the favor of divorcing you. Besides, shouldn't a good-looking guy like me get with a good-looking girl like her? That's the kind of thing that everyone can enjoy. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense, and you better not be counting me as part of everyone in this case. This is the kind of low behavior I expect from you, but to drag my sister into all this? You know how she is. She's practically a kid still. I don't believe this. I feel like I'm going to be sick. What are you going on about? Yeah, Alice doesn't have your jaded cynicism. That doesn't make me some kind of puppet master. I'm merely acting in everyone's best interest. And hopefully you'll understand that someday. You want my thoughts? Pack up that mopey routine and work hard for yourself and that baby because I'm out of sympathy for you. I knew there was something wrong with you, but I always clinged on to the love I had for you. But you can rest easy knowing that love is as dead as it gets now. I hope you're happy with yourself, Eric, because I can safely say you are the worst, most vile, pig-headed man I've ever had the displeasure of knowing. Hey, I'll take it as a compliment from a nagging, frigid, hideous chick like you. Shut up! You want a divorce? Fine, I'll give you a divorce, but you best believe I'm going to squeeze every last penny out of you for this one. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Beneath the pearl clutching and shock, every woman just wants to siphon a man's fortune. Just like a mosquito sucking blood, I say. Doesn't really sound copacetic to my dream life though. Are you sure you can't just swallow your pride just this once and walk away? Pretty pleased with some friggin' cherries on top? Pride is the exact reason I'm not going down without a fight. If you want to humiliate me, you're going to at least need to pay the price. And I mean that very, very literally. Fine, sure, tell yourself whatever you want. At the end of the day, you're just another parasite on mankind. Anyways, messaging you is a total drag, so I'm done for now. Peace. Oh, don't put your phone down just yet, you dip. You realize if we're getting divorced, we have a lot of stuff that needs hashing out. You know, details that matter a good bit to both of our lives. Alright, I can get a lawyer for that though. I've got nothing more to say to you, Capisci? I'd get a lawyer too if I were you, unless you want to be screwed some more. <laughs> you good for nothing, spineless worm of a man. Hey Louise, long time no see, right? Listen, I know it's been a while and we've probably got a lot of catching up to do, but I've got some serious stuff to discuss. Are you free right now? Free to talk with a guy I haven't seen in, what, five years at this point? Sure, I'll humor this weird turn of events. What's eating you, Eric? I mean, if it was enough to break the silence after all these years, I'd say I'm feeling a healthy mix of intrigue and fear. Look, I'm not going to pretend like you were my first idea for someone to talk to, and I certainly wasn't planning on catching up with you anytime soon. But, well, let's just say my hand's been forced, and you're all I got. Well, you always were a charmer, and who could deny such beautiful, poetic words like those? Alright, spit it out. What kind of pickle have you landed in this time? The truth is, Alice is experiencing kidney failure, and she's becoming very ill because of it. If we can't get a donor soon for a transplant, we don't know how much longer she has. Oh my. Kidney failure? That is pretty intense, you're right. Alright then, what would you have me do? Well, there's no easy way for me to say this, and I'm no doctor myself, so trying to explain it would just overcomplicate things, but I'm gonna be a man and ask politely. Will you be Alice's donor for a kidney transplant? Wow. When you put it like that, how can I refuse? Oh, like this. No, thank you. Sorry, not sorry. I have no interest in helping you. You burned those bridges a long, long time ago. I'm not asking you for a favor for my sake. Trust me, I'm doing this for Alice's. Surely you can set aside your vitriolic feelings for me if it means helping her? Helping her? Get real. She's been a spoiled brat her whole life. Alice has been on easy street as the adorable, helpless one while I had to be the older sister who slaved away my entire life. Just for a fraction of the recognition from my parents, from anyone who knew both of us. From you! 
You must think I'm pretty gullible to believe she doesn't have guys lined up around the block ready to gear for both of their kidneys. Man, I'm impressed you or mom haven't tried your own kidneys already. Go bark up another tree, please. Are you serious? Louise, she's your own flesh and blood. How can you turn your back on her? I'm on my knees here. Could you stand to have even a little heart for us? For her? Hmm. All right. Let me put this in the same way you put it all those years ago. What am I going to get out of this? Give me some real incentive and we'll see if I change my tune. Incentive? How selfish can you get? I've heard that one before. The difference is that unlike you, I'm looking out for someone other than myself. Oh, or did you forget that I'm raising a child myself? You know, your child. I wouldn't blame you if you did. Not like you've ever been part of his life since he was born. Right, I get that. If that's the case, do you honestly think I can afford to go under the knife right now? If you want to pull the family card, I'll pull one of my own. My son comes first, no matter what. I'm the only one he has and I can't compromise myself. Certainly not for people who made my life a living hell. What am I going to do if something goes wrong? Leave him in your hands? <laughs> I think not. And I'm not even going to bother with explaining why I'd be spinning in my grave if he ended up in your custody. All right, at the risk of pointing out the obvious, you do realize you can live with just one kidney, right? For goodness sake, she's your only sister and your little sister at that. You two are supposed to look out for each other, aren't you? Are we? Was her stealing you from under my nose while I was pregnant so you could elope her idea of looking out for me? If so, I gotta say I haven't felt very looked after at all. Has she ever looked out for me in the years since then? Ever once expressed interest in meeting her nephew? Nope. Please, just do me a favor and just let go of the past for a second. Think about this clearly, okay? Oh, I'm thinking extremely clearly right about now. By the way, I just messaged Dad about it and he said you didn't even attempt to see if your kidney would work for a transplant. If you're so eager to save your beloved wife, why not try to do it yourself, lover boy? I mean, I would, but... But? You know, it's... These things tend to go smoother when your blood is closer, you know? And you two are as close to twins as it gets. Besides, I can't put myself out like that. I need to work hard and make money, support the family and all that. Hmm, you and I aren't so different, I guess. I guess it's only a valid excuse when you say it, though. Still, outsourcing the job of life-saving to your scorned ex-wife doesn't seem very alpha male to me. What's the real thing stopping you, Eric? I'm scared, okay? There, I said it. Is that what you wanted to hear? I can't stand it. I can't handle blood. I can't handle knives or doctors or operating tables or anything like that. I get freaked out just thinking about it, okay? I asked you because... because I'm not strong enough. So please, just hear me out. <laughs> oh, that is rich. Honestly, I wasn't expecting it to be something so silly, but I'm glad I got that. Phew, I haven't had a good chuckle in a while. <laughs> so much for the alpha male who does whatever he wants, right? Look... I'm trying to be a reasonable, rational adult about this. I can't get any more humiliated, so please, just help me out. Sorry, but I still despise you. Even after that humorous tidbit, you're not getting anything from me, let alone an organ. If you really want a familial tie, I'd say you ought to go to mom and dad and start kissing the ground they walk on and pray they're open to the idea. I would say you can leverage your ties with them, but you never felt particularly interested in charming them, did you? Well, now's your chance. How can you be so cruel? You're the lowest of the low. Coming from the man who hails from rock bottom? <laughs> I'm not particularly bothered. I've learned to fly by myself without you holding me down, and I'm not touching the ground you live on anytime soon. Believe me. Ah, fine. Screw you and screw your organs. I knew coming to you was a ridiculous idea. I'd be better off trying to buy organs on the black market or something. That does seem like the kind of messed up thing you would do. <laughs> or you could, you know, grow up, cast aside your childish fear of the doctor, and save your wife. It's your call.
Are you and Alice still a thing? Ugh, why do you of all people care? Seriously, you're gonna message me that sort of thing after all this time? What do you want, Louise? Not much, just keeping tabs on the fam, big sister business, that's all. I heard Freya the Grapevine that you two had some kind of falling out last week, so I figured I ought to launch my own investigation, you know? I don't buy it. You've got some messed up ulterior motive here. I know it. You gave me the cold shoulder when I asked you for a freaking kidney, so why the sudden interest years later? I'll ask again, what do you want? Nothing, honest. I wasn't even sure what happened, seeing as I haven't heard from her or anything. Obviously you haven't heard anything. You two cut each other off ages ago. Still, you must have found something out, right? You're right about that. I heard it from my dad of all people, if you can believe that. Huh? That doesn't make any sense. She's as isolated from them as she is from you. Be that as it may, the message has reached me. Regardless, family is a weird, powerful, curious thing, isn't it? All right, all right, enough of the plain coy garbage. What did they tell you, huh? What do you know that I don't know about my own wife? You say as if she's not my sister. <laughs> Only when it's convenient to you, apparently. Oh, trust me, she is never convenient to me. Anyways, I heard she's planning on divorcing you. Funny how what goes around comes around, huh? Divorce? That ain't funny at all. What? What is the matter with you? Why on earth would she want to divorce me, huh? Well, before I can get to that, I've got a meaty preamble I've got to get through first. Preamble? Knock it off, Tolkien. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. Just hurry up and tell me what's going on. Sheesh, if you're going to be this disrespectful and impatient, then I'm not sure it's worth the effort to explain. Besides, I don't owe you anything. Clearly not to tell you the truth about Alice's whereabouts. Don't knock it off. You're not some arbiter of truth, alright? Besides, you wouldn't contact me out of the blue with this half-baked nonsense, so whatever you want to say, just lay it on me already. Phew, I see the years apart haven't improved the sour taste you leave in my mouth one bit. If you keep that bad attitude, you can forget about hearing any info from me. Lose your temper or lose your shot at hearing the truth. What's it going to be? I am in control here, Eric, and don't you forget that. If I even catch a hint of your usual superiority complex, if you talk down to me even the slightest, I'll just go ahead and block you on the spot. What? Are you out of your mind? There's my ultimatum. What's it going to be? Man, fine, you win. I really need to know what's going on for my own sanity. So, please, I'm begging you. Can you tell me what happened to Alice? Well, how can I say no to a miserable plea like that? All right, I'll explain it to the best of my abilities. As I've come to understand the situation, Alice has had someone else come into her life. So, with a heavy heart, she's decided it's time to give a tearful goodbye to you and embrace a new chapter in her life. But hey, I've had the rare experience of being aligned with my parents and how we feel about Alice. Although, I have to admit, I think they're much more ticked off than I am at this point. What? That's impossible. She'd never leave me. You're lying. You have to be lying. I gave her a kidney. Oh, you really went through with it? Oh, congratulations! You're slightly better of a guy than I pegged you for. You should be very proud of yourself. Damn straight! Not like I had any choice, trust me, I definitely tried with your parents. And I nearly went into cardiac arrest from the stress, but you know, I did what I had to do. You're telling me that after all that, after I put myself through the scariest experience of my life, that she found another guy? Your conclusion's a little off, but you definitely hit the big points of the matter. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? Don't worry about it. <laughs> but hey, congratulations on making it this far. It's tough getting left like that. We've all been there before, though. I haven't. I thought Alice... I thought that we had something. Hey, look, I definitely get it. I think you should know by now, though, that my sister is, um... Oh, how should I put it? A flighty broad? I mean, if she was willing to elope with you while I was pregnant, you really should have kept a tighter leash on her. You really had faith in a woman who didn't have any qualms leaving her own nephew without a father. I mean, come on, it's not like you've never left anyone before. That was different. This is... 
Oh, you're only sad because when she left, she took your kidney with her? Very selfless indeed. Well, when you play with fire, you might get burned, and you walked into a burning forest, if I may say so myself. Okay, I think that's enough with the jokes from you. She was my whole world, my whole life. I can't grapple with the idea that she'd just pass me up. I gave her money. I, I gave her love. I gave her a part of me. Hey, keep your chin up, buddy. It could be worse. It really, really could be worse. I mean, at least she's not leaving you with a baby to raise, right? For real, though, if you're looking for sympathy, kind words, anything like that, you picked the wrong woman to message about this. <laughs> I might not like my sister, but I like you a whole lot less, and I don't want you to forget that. Oh, can it? Look, just do me a solid and get in contact with her for me somehow, okay? I need to tell her how much I miss her, and pronto. No can do. Alice and I haven't spoken in years. And trust me, you're not going to be the one to bring us together. Like I said the last time you asked me for some ridiculous request, if you want to get help from anyone, go ask my parents. They're my source on Alice's new fling anyway. They haven't moved or changed a number or anything like that, you know? I can't show my face to them. I haven't spoken to them since I tried to get a kidney from one of them. Hmm, yeah, that doesn't sound like a very fruitful avenue of possibility. Shoot, I guess you just have to give up the ghost this time, Eric. That's easy for you to say, huh? You really don't care about what happens to me. Yeah, of course not. I don't want anything to do with you. And frankly, I don't want anything to do with her either. You can both eat my shorts. And I'm going to do myself the wonderful favor of blocking you now so I don't have to hear your incessant whining any longer. You're horrible. You're a monster. What am I going to do? What about me, huh? What about my happiness? As you can imagine, it wasn't long before Alice sent Eric the official paperwork for a divorce. The poor fool was so deep in a pit of denial, though, he managed to avoid it. For a grand total of three months before he got subpoenaed, dragged into court, and basically had his arm twisted with legal action if he didn't sign. I never heard from Eric again after he signed. I can only hope he was finally cut off from everyone and left defeated, penniless, and living in a cave in the woods. That's probably the only place he belongs, since he loved to talk about being a wolf anyways. As for Alice, well, she's Alice. I heard she's finally found someone who fits her tempo, though. I don't know if I'll ever see her and meet her new squeeze, or how long they'll be together, and I don't really care about that either. My folks and I don't really care who she loves, as she as she does it, less destructively than she has in the past, for everyone's sake at this point. All I can hope for is that she stays out of trouble, and if she doesn't, that I at least have the luxury of not being involved. If we've learned anything from these past seven years, though, I think it's to do each other the solid of staying far, far away from each other. On the other hand, my parents have been absolute lifesavers, and I couldn't have done anything without them. They might have given me a hard time while I was growing up, but when I became a mom of my own, they became my biggest supporters. I guess some people are late bloomers to being good parents. I'm not going to dwell too hard on the past, though. They helped me raise my son, get that joker of an ex-husband out of my life, and manage my... complicated relationship with my little sister. Now, for me, my son, Alice and my parents alike, I really hope it's smooth sailing from here on out, at least for a little while. Lord knows we've weathered our fair share of storms, 